hey, power and efficiency is not an overly complex uh, topic, so hopefully we'll get through this uh, pretty quickly, so get ready. Any self-respecting physics student should be able to define and define well what power is. So please write down that power is a rate of work being done or a rate of energy conversion. And it doesn't matter if you are converting uh, something into potential energy or you're con converting energy, uh, kinetic energy, into thermal energy. As long as you're converting energy or using energy at a certain rate, then you can get a power from that. Now, another thing you want to write down is that power is not a vector. It has no direction. For example, if you are uh, using a drill, an electric drill, it's going to be spinning around and generating heat, and there's no direction uh, to that. You might think an elevator is lifting people up, so maybe it's got a direction of its power, but still that power, even of an elevator, is still going to be a scalar. Now the equations for power, fortunately, are pretty simple. We can say that power is energy over time. And the units uh, for that are going to be joules per second, which, you should know, uh, is a watt. Uh, or in other words, symbol W equals joules per second. Another equation that is probably lesser known is that power is equal to force by times velocity. Take a minute and see, pause it. See if you can show how force times velocity ends up with the same units as a watt. I would like to think that you were clever enough to realize that force is going to be measured in newtons and velocity can be measured in meters per second, which you can think of as a newton meter over seconds. And you should be aware, from what you know from work, that a newton meter it's the same thing as a joule. And if you have a joule over a second, then ba bam, you have watts. Another unit of work uh, is actually the horsepower. That's a non metric unit of work. Not you can, there are so many watts in a horsepower. Just looked it up. It turns out that seven hundred and forty six watts equals one horsepower. Apparently the Scottish Physicist James Watt came up with that, uh, that ratio. Two power problems. Please try and solve these right now. Pause it. Hopefully, uh, you knew that one liter of water uh, basically has a mass of one kilogram because the density of water is one kilogram per liter. So you want to think of this as 300 kgs of water. Now, all that's going to matter is how high you're lifting it, because there you're doing the work against gravity. So we really don't care about this 40 meters here. So what we want to say is that if power is work or energy used over time, the work to lift something is mgh over time. And we've got our 300 kilograms. We've got our 10 for gravity. We've got our 12 meters, and our time is going to do in 10 minutes. That's 10 times 60. It's going to give us our 600 seconds. And that's going to give us an answer, I believe, of about 60 watts, a reasonable amount of power for an electrical pump system. Now, for Jack down here, you can think that we might try and use the force times velocity. The velocity is simply going to be the 200 meters divided by the 3.5 seconds. That gives us a value of 57 meters per second, and then it's just easy. 310 times our 57, and we end up with, I believe, about 17,000 watts, or 17 kilowatts. Now, sometimes I forget this power equals force times velocity, because I only use it once a year or something. But what you can also think of is that if power is going to be work over time, this is going to be force times the distance over time. And then 
you might realize that this is your velocity. And so this actually isn't so crazy of an equation after all. Whenever you use machines for dealing with power, people want to know what the efficiency of that machine is because you're going to have to put so much power or energy into it and then you compare that to how much you get out of it. And ideally, you'd like to get as much out of it as you put into it, but it doesn't usually happen. Uh, so the way we measure how good it is as, at transferring that energy, uh, we call it the efficiency. Please write down this definition of the efficiency as being a ratio. And this ratio can be written in a couple different ways. You can write this as the output work divided by the input work. You can also look at it as the power output divided by the power input. Now hopefully you can see what's going to happen to the units is that they're going to cancel out. So efficiency has no units and it is just a ratio so it's always going to be expressed as perhaps a decimal uh, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.65, whatever, uh, or a percent, 50 percent, 65 percent, etc. Now, hopefully, you're also realizing that your output uh, must always be smaller than the input. So, since you're going to have your small number on top and your bigger number on bottom all your efficiencies are going to be less than 1. So you can always say the efficiency has to be less than 1 or 100%. Please pause it and try this efficiency slash elevator problem. Go! Now we should realize that we are trying to find that uh, efficiency is equal to power output. Always your output on top divided by power input. Uh, clearly, our, not about clearly, but our input will be this 4.5 kilowatts or the 4,500 watts right here. Now, our output, we have to figure out what that is because output is going to be work over time. That's the work of lifting, so it's MGH again over time. So we plug in our 245 kilos times 10 times our height of 12 meters. We divide by the 8 seconds. That's going to give us something like 3,675 watts. Now that will be our output. So that goes in here. So we end up with that hopefully smaller number on top and the larger number on bottom. If you have those mixed up, you're going to get an efficiency over 1, and you know that that's impossible for a machine to be more efficient than 100%. That means it's creating energy, and that would be awesome, and yet crazy, and violating all known laws of the physics universe. Time space continuum would be ripped apart. Dogs and cats would be living together in the streets. It would be horrible. Uh, if we do this, we are going to get something like 82% efficiency. I hope you were as successful in your efficiency calculations.